In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all new charger from HTRC. This is their budget line. They're basically a mid range charger company here and which I use on almost a daily basis when I need to charge because I do have the HTRC touch, which is also linked down below. This is their eco version or the cheap version. It's around $39 here. And what it does is it has one port it charges maximum of 10 amps, yet it has all the features you'd want in any other charger. Also some awesome extra features such as a power supply. Now, if you do take a look at the post online you might see it comes with a different type of connector but all we see is this type of connector here which is a t plug to an xt60 and this is great because when i was looking at the post and i was seeing all those wires that is a really big hazard especially the ones that are open like this while you have many of them open for example let's pretend this wire was like this and uh for example you're charging a battery and if anything were to short these then you'll short your battery and also short this guy out so that's a very dangerous thing that you do not want. And I'm very happy to see that it came this way. However, some people might be disappointed because that was not the official cable they were actually stating in the posting there. So you do get the charger cable, which is banana plug to XT60 and you also get a T plug in the middle. You also get a balance board here. Now be careful installing this. This isn't the best of quality. I almost ripped mine off. Um, just the plastic just bent up. So just be very careful when installing it. Keep pressure up top here so it doesn't bend up and then yeah you could just be really bad for you the balance wires here are not silicone everything else is though so usually the, for some reason the old charger manufacturers do this they give you non-silicone wires which are kind of annoying and they do tend to break every once in a while so just keep that in mind when purchasing these now they also provide this for you now this is not for the power supply part but this is more of the input part now this charger can take raw ac input as you can tell right here and it can also take dc input now this is really great especially in the field when you're charging however there is a slight limit here the maximum input voltage is 18 volts so you're not going to be able to use anything more than a 4s if you're using lipos now you can connect this directly to your car's battery and that is how i usually charge in the field i would connect this and connect these to my car batteries and just keep charging up in the field so this is really nice and also don't forget this is only a one port connector so it's really recommended if you're going to purchase this to get some sort of a parallel charging board which i'll have linked down below i have a couple of them linked down below which you can easily charge up to like six batteries at one time with this charger however all the batteries must be around the same voltage and also the same size if you are going to be doing that keep that in mind now let's go over the menu let's take a closer look at the menu and see what they have inside here so we have our program select, we have lithium bat, we also have the nickel metal hydride, we also have the lead acid, user settings, extra functions, we have some extra functions in there. So let's go ahead and check out the lithium part. So we can see that we could charge lipo, lithium high volt, lithium ion, life, and we're good. However, well, you can also modify the end charging voltage, which I'll show you in a bit here. And you could also choose the type of charging or discharging you want to do. So this is a normal charge where it'll actually charge and towards the end of the charge start balancing. We also have fast charge where it doesn't really care about the balance that much but it does keep it in mind but it just really tries to get it as close as to the uh 16.8 as possible here now we also have lipo storage which will either discharge or charge the battery in order to keep it into storage voltage mode which is really great especially in winter season if you want to get the most out of your batteries when you're going to start using them again we also have the discharge option up to two amps maximum however i did test this it would not go over uh 0.6 of an amp so it's a really slow discharge here so you can also do lipo balancing which means you could just leave it for a really long time sometimes and it'll just keep trying to balance it it'll charge discharge charge discharge try to get them as close as possible uh closest to each other as possible and that's what we see here and this option is basically everything else also nickel metal hydrate has the same options now if we go into let's just say the extra functions here we have the battery meter we also have the battery resistance tester, which is really great to have. We also have a lithium battery balancer here for some reason. And we have our digital power, which is always my favorite, favorite option in any charger, especially in the cheaper ones. This is basically a power supply. It'll take whatever voltage, whether it's AC or whether it's a, you know, 4S battery that's plugged into the side and it could boost up that voltage and you could set a limit on the maximum outputted 
amperage here. So what's really nice about digital power is you can use it for a lot of things. You can use it, for example, for large LEDs that need a power supply of 10 amps. You can set this up correctly. So you can put 5 volts, 10 amps. So it's very difficult sometimes to find anything that's 5 volt and 10 amps, especially those wall chargers. So, the, you know, it's limitless what you can do with the digital power supply. It's very useful. And I truly love the digital power supply because it just makes it so convenient in such a small package here. And um, but don't rely on it for safety purposes. I still have not shorted this one out, but I'm planning on shorting it out in the next video with a couple more that I'm receiving. So if we take a closer look at the internals, it has a really, really strong fan, especially when you start discharging. As soon as you start, the fan just kicks in and it's a very, very powerful fan. The Casing is all plastic. It's not metal, so it's not going to be acting like a heat sink like some other ones. Also, if we take a look at the peripherals, we see we have our charging area, we have our balance connector, temperature sensor, PC link, possibly for updates, and a 5 volt 2.1 amp USB connector for charging, for example, a GoPro or something that's going to need charging via USB. So it's very convenient. That's what they're trying to do here. Overall, I've used HTRC products. They're pretty good. They're not that bad, and they've lasted me quite a while. And it's a nice option in the market even though we have a ton of options now and everything's linked down below if you can check those out it's a great support channel come join my patreon where you get access to my secret shop also a ton of giveaways and all of my open hardware schematic files for flight controllers so you can do whatever the hell you want with them and i'll see you in the next one peace out guys